Hi guys, it's MJ and Izzy from Endless RVing, and as you can see, it's cold. It's well, co it's cooler. jacket season, so we're here in fall. It's so sad. I can't wait till the day that we don't have to do this process anymore. Yes. But what are we doing today? So we're winterizing. You know, this is a common thing for a lot of RV owners. If you're not in a warm climate, if you don't snowbird, like MJ said, hopefully we can do that in the near future. But for right now, we have to winterize. So in this video, we're gonna show you common mistakes you may make when winterizing. And then we're gonna show you how we winterize Nelly behind us and how we avoid those mistakes. And you're going to want to watch this video in its entirety because throughout the video, we're going to be going step by step showing common mistakes that people make when they winterize their RV. But before we move any further, this video is sponsored by a really new, awesome product that we've been using. It's called Unique Marine and RV and it's a toilet black tank treatment. This stuff is really good. Like MJ even commented, we've been using it now for about three to four months because we wanted to test it out before we sponsored it really. This stuff comes in drop-in pods, which is what we have right here. You also could get it in powder and liquid form. It essentially does the same thing. It doesn't mask the odor. What it does, there's active enzyme bacteria and it breaks everything out down in your black tank. And this sounds gross, but everything comes out in like a liquid, right? Like we noticed a big difference from when we were using the other products, the TST specifically, to this. There's no more chunks, as gross as that sounds. <laughs> it's just liquid and the odor is gone. We love this stuff. We've been using it, like I said, for about four months. We have a 15% discount code and the link will be down below in the description. All right, so this is a really easy process to do. You're only gonna need a few things, namely, and this is specifically on how we do it. You're gonna need an air compressor. You're gonna need the actual, if you wanna show it here, this little adapter piece, this piece right here is gonna allow you to connect your air hose to your inlet. All these will be linked in the description below. You're also gonna need RV specific antifreeze. We take about three gallons. We got two right here. If we need a little more, we have more. This is super cheap. And finally, some safety glasses, which I'm gonna put on now. So the step number one, the first thing that we're gonna do, first thing we do, number one, it allows us to uh, blow air through the black water tank flush, uh, through the low points. I just like it because it's a two-step. Some people just use antifreeze. Some people just use air. You could do that. That's fine. For me, taking the extra 10 minutes is not a big deal because the cost of a problem with plumbing due to freezing is going to be far more expensive and far more time-consuming. So the first thing you don't want to do is you, you want to have some kind of compressor. We have this Husky compressor. It doesn't have to be this brand. It could be any brand. But what's really important is that you're gonna to wanna to be able to control the amount of air pressure you let out into the system. Now, a lot of these are rated, I know ours is rated for about 65 pounds. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raise this up to about 48 pounds or so. And what that's gonna allow, it's gonna keep us well under that 65 pound limit, and we're just gonna blow air through the system. Why do we blow air through the system? It's gonna push out any water that's left in the lines. So if you remember a little early in the video, I talked to you about that adapter. So essentially what we're gonna do, we have our unit set to about 48 pounds here, our compressor. We are gonna put this into, I'm gonna start with the black water tank flush. Now, one of the common mistakes that people do when they do this, well, really two common mistakes. Number one, they put too much pressure going into the system. You can cause a blowout in the joints. You don't want that. The second thing is your source of air. You don't want a dirty source of air. Why? Because now you're introducing contaminants into your fresh water tank, your fresh water system. Why do you want to do that? So we, we know our air is here. There's actually an air filter built in, if you can see it. So we know the air in here is relatively clean. Plus, when the spring hits, we're going to sanitize our system anyway. So just be aware of those two mistakes when as, for uh, part one of this. So what we're going to do is we have the pressure up to about 48 pounds. We're going to connect. And now what that's doing, it's blowing air for the black tank flush. So the black tank flush is actually fluid going through hosing behind this unit here. It goes up and then into the black tank flush. All this is doing is just pushing out any excessive fluid that may be in there. We don't have to run that too long. Just keep in mind, you might hear the air, air compressor kick on because when it drops under a certain amount of air pressure, it's gonna kick on to build that pressure back up. Once we let that run for, you know, a minute or so, we kind of got everything out. We're gonna move this adapter. We're gonna push it over to the fresh water system, which is really the, the, the kind of more important one. So a couple of things we're gonna do. The first thing that I like to do is I go over to our Truma. I'm not gonna bypass the system yet because I wanna blow whatever water is in here. I'm gonna let the filter out, right? So you're gonna see once I start pressurizing the system, there's gonna be 
water that starts flowing out of there. Once there's no more water coming out of there, I'm going to put the filter back in and then I'm going to start pressurizing the system and open every faucet one at a time. So we're done with the hot water heater. You saw everything come out. You want to let it go until you see a mess. Then pretty much most of the water is out of there. Now all everything is shut down. All my faucets, low point drain, everything is closed. You want to pressurize the system. Like I said, we have it at 48 pounds. So now we're going to go in, we're going to connect and you, you might hear the air compressor kick on and we're just going to let the system pressurize for, you know, 30 seconds or so. You hear the air flowing through there getting pressurized and now I'm going to start opening up the faucets right so there's going to be my fresh cold water on the outside shower you'll hear it running all right we're going to do the same thing with the hot water this is just getting out whatever was in the line And we're going to do that same process for every single faucet, including your, if you have a, uh, a dishwasher, if you have a washer dryer, toilet, everything. Anything that water comes out of, we're going to do that. We're also going to open up the low point drains, which you'll see here, shooting water out of there. You could do that at the end of the whole process if you wish at the beginning. It doesn't really matter. As long as everything is misting, that's essentially what you're going to want to do. All right, the next step we're going to do, we're going to bypass our hot water heater. Now, why do you do this and why that's a, another mistake? Well, it's not really a mistake, but it's something that you should try to avoid. You, you want to bypass. And why do you want to do this? Because there's no need to pump a whole bunch of gallons of antifreeze into your hot water heater. There's just no need for it. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to bypass. And what that means is we're, we're not going to allow fluid to go into this unit itself. So if you look, MJ, if you come behind here, and I don't know if you can see this, this is gonna be different for every RV, but you can see there's a series of valves here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find the appropriate valve combination so I know this is bypass. What is the easiest way to do that? I'm gonna flip the valve, I know which one it is. But what you wanna check is that when you run air again, that nothing is coming out of here, right? That way you know this is bypass because there's no air flowing out of it. All right, the next step you wanna do once everything is blown out is that you're gonna to wanna to bypass your hot water heater, like I said, and then you're gonna to wanna to run antifreeze through the fresh water system. And here's where another mistake is made. You wanna run RV specific antifreeze like this. RV Marine. Why? Because it's non-toxic. You don't want to run like the one you put in the radiator of your vehicle because you will poison yourself. So this is only about two bucks a gallon. Who knows? With inflation, it may be like $8 now. We've had this since last year, but uh, they're usually about two bucks a gallon. So depending on what your setup is, there is going to be a series again of valves. We have a siphoning tube. It's just going to siphon everything into the fresh water system. We're going to do that, turn the pump on. Once it's pressurized, the, tump, the pump will shut off. And then we're going to turn on each faucet, ice maker, dishwasher, washer dryer, anything where water comes out of, you're going to want to run it until it turns pink. All right, so you can see right now we have about a gallon and a half to pressurize the system. Now, keep in mind, as we start turning faucets on and fluid starts coming out, you're going to want to put a fresh gallon in here so it can continue refilling, recharging the system. I think we take about three gallons to, to do the whole thing. Essentially, for under 10 bucks and about 20 minutes of your time, you can do this yourself. So the way I like to do it is that I, I start right in the outdoor shower and then I kind of just work my way through everything. So I'm gonna start with, first thing you wanna do is turn the pump on, which it is. I'm gonna start with the cold and you're gonna see it's gonna like mist and then it's gonna turn pink. So let's do that. It's already pink, so that's good. You can see the pink. The cold water line for the outdoor shower is good. I'm not gonna, now I'm gonna hit the hot water. And that is pink. So this part right here, we're good. We're gonna do the same exact thing for every single faucet in the whole coach. So the next step and the mistake that people forget to do, we're not done yet. So we have all the fresh water system with the antifreeze in it, but you gotta remember, when it goes into the drain, you have those peat traps, there's fluid stuck in there. You don't want that to freeze because there's not really room for that fluid to expand. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pour antifreeze down your drain. Now our kitchen has a pump and you can hear it'll start pumping out to the gray tank. So I know this is good. I'm gonna do this again for every single drain. I'm gonna do it in the toilet also. So the last thing you're gonna wanna do 
is gonna be dropping some kind of treatment into your black water tank with some fluid, both water as well as your antifreeze. We use the unique RV Digested. This stuff works really well. Drop one in there, put a little bit of the antifreeze and just let that, you can let it sit for the winter, at least for us. That way nothing freezes down there and this stuff is working all winter. That way everything can break down, you flush it out when you get ready for the spring. Also, you're gonna remember there is a seal in your toilet. You don't wanna let that RV antifreeze sit in there because it's actually like an alcohol base and what it'll do is it'll dry out that rubber seal. So what we're we will do is just kind of dump it, make sure it's dry. And then what I like to do, I spray a little 303 protectant or something to moisturize that rubber seal. That way it doesn't dry out over the winter and you get a good seal when you come back in the spring. All right, so with all that said, you can save yourself a bunch of money because number one, you're saving yourself time, fuel mm -hmm. to get to a service station or an RV place, and they're gonna charge you like 150 bucks. Well, especially is, now, it's harder to get in. Which is kind of crazy. Like this whole thing is gonna cost you less than 20 bucks in about a half hour of your time. Right, and, yeah. and I was gonna say, or you can snowbird in Florida. Which oh, is, you could do that. Which is our plan. All right, so in the comments below, let us know, have you made any of these common mistakes? Do you winterize yourself? Is this going to be your first time winterizing because you watched our video? Let us know in the comments below. And for myself and MJ, we thank you guys for watching, and we'll see, see you, you on, on the road. road.